Oh, that rated it. It's probably the the LA office that did it, uh, the LA SAC office. But yeah, I mean, there's a multitude of reasons, man, why they would uh, rate a house like that. But what I will tell you is this: for them to go ahead and get a um, a search warrant means they got quite a bit of probable cause to search his home because um, at the federal level to get a federal search warrant, it's fairly difficult. Um, you need a lot of probable cause. Could to, you break that down for me? Please, like, because again, I, you know, I shared my personal experience. I said uh, they've executed a search warrant at my place before, and it was it. it the, the simple premise was, hey, someone came to us saying that a crime got committed, and it said that you had a videotape of said crime, but you weren't willing to give it up. So we got to go get it, and that's it, like just seeing the text message and hearing that person's story. They a judge signed off on it. They came in and got got the DVR. They got whatever they needed to, you know, look to see if it happened. Obviously, nothing happened. No charges got brought. But on a federal, on a federal level, level, what's actually needed? So to get a – so, all right, when you get a search warrant through the feds, right, you have to go to a magistrate judge to get one, right? And a magistrate judge, think of it as kind of a lower-level judge than a, than a district judge. And a district judge, you'd go to them and you get, like, a Title III to get your – uh, to listen to a phone tap or whenever someone's getting sentenced and a criminal case is actually proceeding. But to go ahead and get a search warrant, a simple search warrant, you just need a magistrate judge. However, AUSAs are very picky about giving search warrants because for you to get a search warrant, you have to go through a federal prosecutor to do it. And then the U.S. Attorney's Office files a search warrant on your behalf, right, with the judge. And then you go ahead and you're able to go ahead and execute it. So whenever you have somebody high profile, like a Diddy, like uh, R. Kelly, because R. Kelly actually, uh, HSI did the R. Kelly case as well. Mm. Anytime you have a high-profile guy and they know that they're going to have the news out there with them doing raids, etc., they're going to make sure that search warrant is airtight. They're going to make sure they have a lot of probable cause. Now, with that said, for them to get a search warrant like this tells me they have multiple informants and sources of information more than likely, people that are cooperating giving them information, because for you to be able to get inside of a house, you need actionable info within somewhere between two weeks to a month. So that tells me that someone was in the home, saw some stuff that was questionable, contacted the feds, and they were able to go ahead and get that search warrant through a judge because the search warrant needs to be fresh with information for you to be able to get in, especially when you got somebody high profile like this. Okay. Okay. So again, um, excuse my ignorance, but because I think a lot of people view the feds as like, we don't even know what they do on a daily. So, wait, how would this even be initiated? Like, does someone come to someone's cubicle and be like, hey, I think Diddy's fucking a bunch of people and trafficking in them. Like, how does this even get started? Like, okay, say you're an agent, right? Because you used to be an agent. If you're right. an agent, how would you get this started? Do you have to go to your superior? Do you have to, like, kind of get other people on board with this? Because I can't imagine... A judge is just like you have a thought and then you just write it up and a judge just listens to it immediately. Who would you have to talk to to get because it got to be an investigation of some sorts before this even starts, right? Yeah. So, OK, so I could take you. There's many ways that this could begin, but I can give you a typical scenario of how it'll happen. Right. OK, so. You'll be sitting there. Right. And you'll get a tip. Right. Like the duty agent. Right. So there's something called a duty agent and the duty agent is the guy that's on call that day. So it can be very easy where, like, someone will call in a tip, hey, I got this information, blah, blah, blah. It gets filled to the duty agent. Now, if nobody already has the open case on Diddy, the duty agent is responsible for either, A, taking that case or delegating it to the proper group. Now, this is the LA field office, right? And, guys, I'm going to give you a lot of detail here, so bear with me. So this is the LA field office. I know they have a human trafficking group and they have a human smuggling group. So more than likely what happened was if it came from a source and there wasn't already an open case on Diddy, it got routed through the duty agent to this human trafficking group. Whoever was on duty for the human trafficking group that day, right, because there's a general duty agent and a human trafficking agent, right, will take the case. So they get the case. They get the information. They meet with the source. The source says, hey, I got this information, X, Y, Z. The agent verifies it. What information do you have? Oh, I got toll records. I was in the house. I got these pictures, blah, 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 right? So the agent looking at the information, will they decide, okay, I'm going to open up an actual formal investigation. They open up a case, they, get a, they generate a case number. 
Once they generate a case number, they put in that initial report of investigation, right? Or ROI. Then, <clears throat> then they go to their supervisor. Hey, I got this information. I think it's good. Uh, here's the source. Sometimes the supervisor want to meet with the source and you debrief them together. Something like this, they probably debrief the source multiple times or they have multiple sources, right? And I can see right now I'm watching your video that this is all HSI. So 100% they ran this thing, which is, uh, which is uh, I expect, because HSI actually does uh, human tracking. But anyway, <clears throat> they get that information from the source. Then they call the AUSA's office. Hey, I got this information. We have reason to believe that Diddy's involved in some sex trafficking, blah, blah, blah. Here's my information. AUSA goes through it. Okay, good. Write up an affidavit. That agent writes up an affidavit. AUSA goes through it. AUSA pushes up his chain now. He pushes it up all the way to United States Attorney for the District of Los Angeles, right? Mm. Or the cent uh, Central District of uh, California is probably going to be, or Southern District of California, depending on where LA falls. I think it's either Central or Southern District of California. Either way, then Assistant United States Attorney pushes that affidavit up all the way to the USA. That's a presidentially appointed position. They approve it. They say, all right, it's good to go. It's been been through multiple layers. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, yeah, wait, wait. so you're wait, saying wait. all this has to happen before exactly. what we're watching? Yes, 100%. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm explaining to you the, exact, the full process of how it goes. So you agent writes the affidavit, sends it to the AUSA. AUSA sends it up, up all the way the chain, especially something big like this. USA goes ahead and signs off on it. Then they give it to the, they send it directly to the judge. The agent goes to the judge's chambers, swears to the affidavit. You true, every, is everything in this affidavit true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, it is. Boom, sign it. Now they got the now they got the warrant, and they could go kick the door in. Wow, that's how they do it from uh, from A to Z. That's, that's how it, it would typically work. Or it could have been the other option is this: there was already an open case on Diddy. They've been looking for it. They've been investigating this for a while. Maybe complaints came in or whatever. And then they finally got the probable cause to go ahead and search the houses. Hey, oh my God. So how, how does this um, coordination work? Because this was also alarming to me. So they're raided in three different states, California, New York, and Florida at the same time. How much you, I, I put, I just threw like, so you know me, I'm like a pocket watcher guy. So I just, threw, I'm like, yo, this has to cost, cost the feds like a hundred thousand dollars. So many people, manpower, they have to coordinate with law enforcement locally. This is three houses that, that are huge that they all have to go get in the, in, in um, whatever amount of time. How, do, how does that coordination work? And, and how is the resources even allocated and, and how does like even HSI or the feds treat this type of huge extensive operation, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is how it goes, right? <clears throat> what ends up happening is there's going to be one case agent and the case, the, the lead office, right? So it's either going to be New York, Miami or LA is the lead office. And then there's one case agent, right? Now that case agent is a part of something called a group. Every group has somewhere between seven to 15 guys, right? That's a composed of HSI special agents, task force officers, et cetera. So that case agent is responsible for this investigation. Then he identifies other properties that the suspect might have, one in Miami, one in LA, one in New York, right? And what he does is he reaches out to his counterparts. They sent something called a collateral, all right? I'm really getting in, in the detail now with y'all. So he sent something, a collateral request to those other field offices. And says, yo, I'm getting search warrants, right, on this property. I also need search warrants in Miami and in New York. So he needs a judge to sign off. He needs three different judges to sign off because you can't get a search warrant for a property that's not in your district as a judge. So the case agent. Wait, even federally? Yeah. No, you have to you have to go to a judge in that district if you're going to do a search warrant. So, oh, wow. so for example, they got a judge from L.A., so Central District of Los Angeles, which I think is where LA falls in, or the Southern District of California. Sorry, Southern District of California. Then they got one out of the, depending on where did he is in New York City, Southern District of New York. Then they got another one here out of the Southern District of Florida, right? Those three magistrate judges signed. But more than likely, the case agent coordinated with other agents in the Miami field office and the New York field office to get the search warrants. I'm not sure who wrote the affidavits. It probably was the, the main case agent because he's going to have all the facts. 
He wrote the affidavits, then he gave it to those agents in those other places, and they swear to it. If you read any affidavit, it says, you know, the information presented is merely to establish probable cause, and it's information given to me by other agents and law enforcement personnel. That's what that means, that sentence. Because that other agent out of L.A., who's probably the main case agent, he wrote affidavits for the Miami properties and for the New York properties, sent it to an agent over there in New York and in Miami. They swore to it in their district with their judge. Then they were able to simultaneously do search warrants at each property. And then he also, on top of sending the affidavit over there, he probably sent them a collateral request to do a search warrant. So there's an open case in New York, there's an open case in LA, and there's an open case in Miami, all under the name case number, probably based out of Los Angeles. I'm assuming the case agent is probably out of LA. Wow. Hey, recently, it, it, it's so crazy to me. That, this is why I thought it wouldn't happen. Recently, um, you know, New York City's mayor... And I'm wondering how, how how much so when this is going on, how much is are like elected elected officials even briefed on it? Like for example, not too long ago, New York City's mayor Eric Adams actually gave Diddy the key to the city. You know, um, do they usually know? Like, hey, you know, we're investigating this guy, and we might take him in, or we might actually make some moves on trying to get him, you know, charged. Um, in the foreseeable future, uh, I, I think this happened within the last year or year and a half. Yeah, hold on, bro. You cut out there. I'm sorry, man. Is it you, something about the mayor of New York? I'm sorry. Yes. So the mayor of New York gave gave Diddy a key to the city. Um, okay. And, um, and this happened pretty much like in the last year and a half, I believe. Now, do you think that an elected official, while all this is happening? would be almost brief like hey listen you want to stay away from this guy because we are investigating him he might be the subject of an investigation that we might take him in because this looks embarrassing for the mayor of new york who by the way himself has certain type of allegations as well yeah no they definitely didn't tell him anything guaranteed really shit yeah like whenever you're doing an investigation like this high profile or whatever it may be you're going to do everything in your power. And I'm looking at your video right now, like from this, there's, I could see that there's um, higher level brass at this search warrant too. Like everybody's out here. Uh, I'm looking right now at your video. Wait, wait, how could you tell? How could you tell? How could you tell? I could tell because the way they're dressed. So like the guys that are there wearing suits and shit like that, those do, like 99% of HSI agents don't wear a suit every day to work. They just don't. Like bro, bro that, we used to make fun of people that do that shit, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I see guys in formal wearing, et cetera. Those guys are more than likely uh, assistant special agents in charge, special agents in charge, deputy special agents in charge, etc. Something big like this, I'm sure that they would all be out there too. Um, but yeah. Um, but as far as like the the mayor of New York, nah, they didn't tell him shit, bro. Guaranteed, like they they, especially if he has his own allegations going. Whenever the feds are doing cases like this, they try to keep it hush hush because they know it'll be a big deal if it gets out there. The fact that they were able to pull this off without the press being out there immediately. Or, and disrupting what they got going on, hey, they, they, they did some pretty good OPSEC. Wow. So, okay. Now, a lot of people are looking at this and they're thinking that Diddy is already in cuffs. From from what um, I heard on the news report, they said the feds probably strategically planned this because Diddy boarded a plane leaving either the L.A. or the Miami residence today and they did it while he was away, but I could imagine wherever he landed at, they probably greeted him and probably served him saying, hey, listen, we did do search warrant or whatever. W what's the likelihood of basically nah. since now it's public and they did a search warrant that he'll either be in cuffs or do you think this is a pre-grand jury pre uh, uh, um, proceeding where we won't see Diddy in cuffs until there's an indictment? Yeah, so um, so the thing is, is they don't really need to do anything as far as like letting the subject of the search warrant know. Uh, the, the only thing they have to do is they got to give Diddy a return. So once they do their search warrant and they're done, uh, they have to give him a list of all the things they took from him, right? So that he knows and it's going to be numbered and all that other stuff, right? Because you have to do that by law. Whatever you take, you have to let them know what you took specifically. Uh, however, um, the fact that they're doing a search warrant uh, it's not good. I, I would say there's a very high likelihood that he might get arrested after this. Um, because what people need to understand is you need a significant amount of uh, probable cause 
to go into someone's home, right? So when you look at like getting a search warrant, right, for like a phone or just getting a search warrant for like a computer or getting a search warrant for a house or an email, et cetera, the house is always at the top of the hierarchy because that's considered your castle, right? So for you to be able to get a search warrant on a home, it requires by far the most probable cause. I'll say the only thing that beats out a house is getting a wiretap for probable cause. Hey, so, hey, 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 can I ask you this? <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. So, now, he, here's also the thing that I, I think makes this very interesting. Like, some of the allegations and what we've just heard publicly, they span all the way back to the 90s. Yeah. Now, because, yeah. of, because of the time span... How does that change the scenario? Because, like, again, if someone is like, yo, hey, listen, this happened, yo, there might be a couple of VHS tapes this motherfucker kept of, of like, him having these little orgies. It's like, what does the time span of, of this criminal, um, you know, accusation, because really it spanned from the 90s to now, how would, like, HSI or any, like, government body treat that? So that, that's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the, the most federal crimes have a five-year statute of limitations, right? Um, oh, I'm looking. It looks like the FBI is out there, too. I'm looking at this Fox News thing. It looks like that. Really? I can tell from their vest. It looks like the Bureau is out there, too. Oh, okay. fuck. So, um, all right. And the sheriff's office, it looks like. But anyway, most federal crimes have a five-year statute of limitations, right? So... Since most crimes have their statute of limitations, obviously, if there were allegations from the 90s, they can't do anything. However, right, if the feds could prove that this has been a continuing conspiracy, that he's been doing this shit since then, and he's still doing it up to five years ago, all that shit comes in. All that stuff co comes in, right? Um, because they're going to, and they could also, if, if, uh, if they also wanted, they could go through a RICO uh, way to do it as well. If they could uh, identify other people in his organization that have been helping him out, doing this crap, et cetera, et cetera, RICO is also a way to get around the statute of limitations. That's how they were able to indict all these mafia guys for stuff that was going on, you know, a decade prior, et cetera. And it's because they're able to establish, yo, th there's a continual conspiracy. They've been doing this shit for a while. He's still doing it. And then all that stuff comes in. Man. That's how they're able to get around the statute of limitations problems. Yo, this looks bad. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, again, first of all, I was saying about, like, just Diddy's ability to make an income. You know, uh, he, yes, he has certain type of shit baked in. Like, for example, he makes a lot of money off publishing. And if you listen to a Biggie record or certain bad boy artists, he's always going to get money from. It's actually a sizable amount of money he'll always get. But the majority of the money that really, because he was catapulted into a billionaire status, which, by the way, other than him, before the only times I can remember raids being done, obviously they did one on Mar-a-Lago for um, Trump. But, you know, they're almost kind of, that Trump raid isn't this. Like, they're almost looking like this, like, is a Epstein type of thing. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, what you know, his income is gonna be like trashed. Like it's no way he's gonna be making whatever he was making previously just off of this headline. Is part of the Fed strategy when they're going up against a high profile person like Diddy? Hey, listen, this is a guy of multiple resources, m many finances. We should attack him in a public for uh, um type of forum that would probably hurt those things and probably help our case in possibly either bringing charges or getting a conviction. Because, you know, you know, um, infamously, um, what's my guy's name again? Irv Gotti said he felt the part of the Fed strategy was to deplete him of the resources. Like, for example, they audited, like, the label and audited his business so he couldn't use money as freely as needed. So when it came to his other friends that were charged with, like, really heinous crimes, he couldn't contribute to their legal fees or anything like that. And he felt that was a ploy for the government to get him. You get what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know it's super early, but, like, watching this happen with Diddy, I'm like, how could Diddy make a living now?
Yeah, um, I fixed I fixed my mic a little bit. I adjusted it. Let me know if that sounds better. Oh, no, uh, it sounds way better. It sounds way better? All right, yeah, sorry about that, chat. Give me ones in the chat if it's good. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so I, I see what you're saying here. So let's attack this from, I guess, uh, overall. Do the feds actively go after your income yes. to purposely cripple you financially so you can't defend yourself? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the question. Uh, the answer is it depends. So if they know that your money is illicit, they will. They'll freeze your bank accounts. They know you're a drug dealer, et cetera. They will, right? Um, I turned my volume up a little bit. All right, guys, I turned it up just a little bit, but I brought it down because I'm on Discord. But I brought it up a little bit. should be good now. Give me ones if it's good now. I just turned it up just a set tad. Anyway, so do they purposely go try to cripple you financially? No, unless they know that you uh, got your funds illicitly. Let's say you're a drug trafficker, et cetera. Yeah, they're definitely going to move um, to freeze your money. Now, with that said, Diddy has legit money, right? He made it off the music business, off uh, Ciroc, et cetera. Most of it, more than likely, is probably going to be clean money. He shouldn't have an issue with that. But if they could show that you were money laundering for a drug trafficking organization or some other uh, unlawful, uh, it's called uh, PUA, uh, it's called um, uh, SUA, Specified Unlawful Activity, right? Then they're going to go after your money. So that's step one. Uh, but if they don't, then it is what it is. The real reason why the feds win most of their cases, bro, is because they do their investigation for a long period of time. Oh, shit. Is that fucking Tony? What? Bro, I think I recognize one of the guys on the floor here right now that they're showing on TV, on your stream. Man, rest in peace, Tony, yeah. man. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> nah, anyway. It's crazy. Hey, if you recognize uh, some of your, your former co-workers, it's over, Diddy, man. Yo, what the fuck, bro? Yo. God, damn. I, 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 I digress. So, uh, yo, what the hell? Anyway, um, so the reason why the feds beat so many people isn't necessarily because they, they cripple you financially when they go after people like this that have a lot of money. It's because they've done their investigation for years prior to them coming after you, right? Or, or at least a year or several months. Like, they're not going to go ahead and execute a search warrant unless they're 100% certain that they're, they're going to probably get some evidence out of that. And they're not going to indict you unless they're 100% sure that they're going to win the case. The, the fucking, um, the United States Attorney's Office, bro, has like a 98% win rate. And it's because they don't even indict unless they're ready for trial. I remember, I'll tell you guys this from personal experience. So anytime I would give my grand jury package to an AUSA, right, which is all the documents, all the evidence to indict the case, the AUSA would always tell me, I need more. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why do you need so much, bro? This is just probable cause. But they're like, no, I need everything to go for trial right here, right now. So I couldn't even give them the package and then push it up for indictment until they were, unless the AUSA felt like they were ready for trial. That's how thorough they are with this stuff. Mm. Wow. This looks really uh, bad. So um, in terms of timing, it was interesting to note. They said that the feds were, they knew what was going on. They said they allowed Diddy to leave the property. And then they did this. So they put his sons in cuffs. But as far as we know, Diddy flew somewhere else. Is there a is there a thought towards like, you know, if you have a search warrant to serve, are you going to make sure the person, um, obviously this is a different situation because there's multiple properties. And also they probably, you know, want to feel like they're catching these people at the most off guard time. Is there a way to kind of, Normally serve a search warrant, like, okay, they won't be expected at this time, or you're like, hey, we're just going to show up when we show up. Yeah, so um, it's standard procedure that once you're um, you're doing a search warrant, everyone that's in the house gets handcuffed. It's just like a safety thing. You're like It doesn't mean you're under arrest or whatever. They just restrain you and make sure they remove all the people outside of the premises, and then they basically own the house while they're doing their search warrant. So they, they handcuff everybody, remove them from the property, and then they go in and they do what they got to do. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're arrested. They just detain you for safety reasons. Mm. Jesus. Uh, b by the way, uh, according to what at least um, First Eleven is saying or First Coast News is saying, they're saying that the, um, the feds are looking into possibly charges of, you know, um, sex trafficking, illegal possessions of firearms, uh, let me see what else they said. It says sources tell NBC Diddy is the subject of a 
federal investigation. My bad, I'm waiting until this goes past. With uh, uh, witnesses interviewed, what regarding allegations of sex trafficking? Witnesses, okay, that's a problem. With uh, sex trafficking, assault, drug possession, illegal firearm possession. Wow. Why would Homeland Security, I thought Homeland Security was like meant to like, you know, you know, after, you know, the horrific situation with 9-11, I thought Homeland Security was meant to like prevent things like that. Like, well, why do they care if Diddy's, you know what I mean, having some orgies? He likes when other men have sex with his wives. That's his thing. Yeah. So this is something that uh, that a lot of people don't know about HSI, which, you know, I obviously always used to blame the agency for being really bad with marketing. Human trafficking is actually like an HSI-led crime. Uh, you know, I, I know people say, oh, the FBI does it too, blah, blah. Yeah, they do. But I would say more than the, the, the HSI does it more often and are better at it. And the reason why a lot of times is because they could do human trafficking domestically with like U.S. citizens, as you see right now. And they can also do uh, human trafficking with foreign nationals because the FBI doesn't really have the capability of doing investigations on foreign national on uh, on cases that also involve immigration. Like, yeah, they have immigration authority, but they don't have the ability to really deal with it, right? Because they don't have access to A-files, immigration databases, a bunch of government jargon that I won't get into now. Um, but <clears throat> the point is, is that uh, the Bureau definitely, I'm sorry, HSI definitely does human trafficking. Uh, they're the ones that actually prosecuted uh, R. Kelly for it. So um, it's just something that they do that no one knows. Hey, let me ask you a question. So I, I, I've been honestly trolling with like, you know, uh, Young Miami and I'm like, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. But clearly, you know, she's also spoken about certain sexual encounters and mentioned other women, other women who actually accused Diddy of certain sexual, you know, um, crimes. But she's like, hey, you know, Diddy could have had, I could have had Diddy have you do this and third. How confident are you? Again, I know, I know you know probably limited details just like us. How confident are you that with all what we're seeing now, right? Um, mm -hmm. that there was probably at least someone who was speaking to the government and telling them not only may, maybe what's going on, but maybe what they could find. Because that was the big thing with Mar-a-Lago, right? Like, it wasn't just yeah. like, hey, just come in. It was like, hey, they got they got all in paperwork right over there. You know what I mean? So they came in with a purpose. They didn't just and come pictures. in to run around and just like, you know, kind of have like a, a house tour. Yeah, so... I'm 90% plus confident that they have sources that have been in all these properties. That's how they're able to get actionable information, right? Mm. Uh, so I'm 90% sure. Number two, also, I wanted to mention this. Since they, I'm assuming they, they, they wrote these warrants, right? Whenever you write a search warrant, you need to allege the crimes that are being committed, right? So they probably wrote these search warrants. I think someone put firearms as well. They probably wrote these search warrants for, for sex trafficking, right? How the feds get venue with sex trafficking or human trafficking, whatever it is, is there needs to be an interstate nexus. As you can see clearly here, they got three properties in three different districts identified. That gives them the venue to, to now do with it because there's interstate nexus, which automatically is going to involve the feds. But as far as them uh, having informants, et cetera, I'm 90% plus sure because for you to be able to get into a, search, into a home on a search warrant, you need info that's fresh. That's that's really big on federal search warrants is fresh information within the past few weeks. Hey, hey, okay. So, so, so let me ask you this question. Yeah. As someone who was a former agent, now we, we've all seen in the media that there's been many allegations, but these allegations happen to be coming out via civil lawsuits. As someone who's only, you know, your job is to pursue criminal charges, how much could you piggyback off civil information or information alleged on a civil level to maybe either be a source of your investigation or even to pursue something even in in terms of an overall investigation in trying to get somebody incarcerated because this is what people are thinking right yo you should have this this is the whole thought for the hip-hop universe Yo, if you would pay Cassie, she wouldn't have said nothing. If she ain't said nothing, nobody would have sued you. And basically, no no charges would have ever came because her speaking and her filing that civil lawsuit led to a lot of conversation in the media. Now, maybe an investigation opened up. So how much do you guys weigh civil, you know, lawsuits or, you know, allegations of that sort? 
Well, I mean, I'll tell you this. I'm 100% certain that they talked to Cassie. 100% certain that they probably 100%. went ahead, interviewed her, asked her what her experience was like, blah, blah, blah. Um, Why would you say 100%? Then, Why would you say 100%? Wh why would I say 100%? Because she was with him for so long, and she knows all the players. Mm. So if I'm running a human trafficking case like this or a sex trafficking case like this, and I got someone that I know may, uh, uh, you know, did a civil lawsuit and was very close to this individual for years, has intimate knowledge of where his properties are, has intimate knowledge of his associates, phone numbers, addresses, et cetera, because Cassie's probably privy to all that shit, right? Yeah. I'm definitely going to interview her and being like, yo, I know you got your civil lawsuit, but we need some information, blah, blah, blah. Clearly, she don't like Diddy, so she's going to give all the information that they need. So I guarantee you they talk to her, and even if she didn't have – let's say hypothetically she didn't have actionable information on, like, what's in the houses, right? Yeah. Let's say yeah. She, they, they, she didn't have it because she hadn't been there for so long. She can point them to other people that fuck with him that they can go and interview. That's I, that's also another big thing why I think that they definitely talk to her because she can lead them in the right directions to get the information they need because she was with him for so long. So I'm 99% sure that they talked to Cassie. She led them to other people. They talked to those people. Some of those people turned. They got information. They went in these houses. They took pictures. They gave actionable information. They were just, you know, getting all this evidence. And then, bam, next thing you know, all right, we got the probable cause for all three properties. Cool. We're going to do a multi-search warrant operation they probably did a big ass brief this morning with everybody there right on teleconference and everything in a different jurisdictions and they all hit the house at the same time they got, all got the warrant signed around the same time and got the uh, and did, did the hit at the same time because keep in mind once you get a search warrant you have about seven days to execute you don't have to hit it right then and there okay so when do they have to turn over well, okay, so they already probably turned over the, you know, I, I know Diddy's lawyers are either on the way to these properties or whatever the case. They have to give a copy of the search warrant to the lawyers, right? They're going to give a copy of the return. Um, I don't know if they're going to get, I mean, obviously Diddy's going to get a copy of the affidavit. That's what I want to read mm -hmm. because that's going to have the, the probable cause in there and how they did it. Um, Would that be on Pacer? Um, Do you know? It could be. Um, more than likely it'll be sealed though. Mm. Uh, we, we probably, it's probably going to be sealed okay, because yeah, I guarantee you they probably put a seal order on this thing for that very reason, since it's such a big case. Wow. Holy shit. Man. I wouldn't be surprised if they, cause I used to do that with my search warrants. If I, if I was like going to go after somebody that had some money or somebody that had a little bit of cloud or something like that, we, I would ask for a seal order on, on the search warrant too. So people can't pull it up. Give me, give me what you're looking at and what you think is probably gonna most likely happen. So, um, I can confidently say, at this point, there's 100 percent informants involved, multiple informants because it's multiple jurisdictions. So Young you Miami is one of them. Trust me. Yep. So there's Carisha. definitely multiple sources of information. Carisha, That's one. Please. Okay. All right. Really? Um, go ahead. Wait, you hold say on, something wait, no, no, hold on. No, no, no. no. What I was saying, I was, I was making a joke about, like, I said, Young Miami is probably one of them. No, but, 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 but let me ask you this question. Well, yeah. if you're the feds, how, how could you get an informant unless maybe they were involved themselves? Because if I was someone who was just an employee of Combs Enterprise or whatever, I'd be like, I'm, I'm not cooperating with you guys. This has nothing to do with me. I just do my job. I'm gonna go home. Like, what leverage do, do the feds have to try to get an informant? Or how would you particularly flip an informant if you you were investigating this case and then you run into someone who may be working for him or whatever the case is? This is a very good question. So, um, so we got to. So for me to properly answer this, I got to break it down for you how it goes, right? So, not every informant is the same, right? So. And I'm going to break down all the different types of informants that the feds use. So there's a confidential informant, right? A confidential informant is a paid source. Nine out of ten times when you read reports, they're referred to as CI number XYZ or human source XYZ, blah, 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 right? The FBI, DEA, everybody, we have different terms for it, but typically that's a paid informant, right? That's, that's one, right? Two is you have a cooperating defendant. And a cooperating defendant might not necessarily be signed up and gets paid, 
but they're trying to work off a charge or you have charges over their head, right? That's mm. two. Third is what we call a source of information. This is someone that, you know, is providing information freely. They might be an enemy of the individual, right, that, that, uh, that they're giving information against, a competitor, whatever it may be. They're just giving this information because they have some kind of reason for it, right? So that's a source of information. Then you get, like, the good Samaritans that just call in and, you know, give the information just because. But only one of them is paid. One of them is working off charges most of the time, and the other two can be for retribution, revenge, or whatever, or a good Samaritan. So those are the three types of informants that you deal with. Confidential informants, source of information, and cooperating defendants. So in this case, it might be a, co a, a combination of all, the, all of them. Like, let's say they pinched one of Diddy's employees. Hey, we caught you with drugs. Oh, okay, I don't want to go down for this. I'll provide some information. Or let's say someone is a competitor of Diddy, right, doesn't like bad boy, has an issue with him, et cetera, comes to the feds, hey, did you guys know that he's doing X, Y, Z at his house? This is how I know, boom, right? Or it could be a paid confidential informant that they've worked with before that has intimate knowledge of music execs doing a bunch of bullshit. So it could be any of the three. It could be any of the three. Mm. Cassie would fall under like the source of information uh, parameter where she's providing the information uh, fairly freely and she has uh, an ax to grind with him. And obviously when you take information from people like this, you have to be very careful because they might lie, they might sensationalize things because they dislike the person. And that's where it's important where you gotta, um, you gotta, it's called independently corroborating that information. God damn, man. This is, this is bad. Um, yeah, it's not good at all, man. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if charges aren't filed by this, by this year. Okay, so it's, but, but you do believe th they're gathering stuff to present to the grand jury, right? You don't think the grand jury has possibly convened yet, no, right? Nah, nah, I, I, I highly doubt it. Um, they're, they're, they're probably um, getting the information now to try to get them indicted. Because it, it, the, the, to be honest with you, if, if they had the information to indict them, they would have indicted them and did the search warrant. They would have done it all in one day and arrested them the same day. Mm. Does that, if that makes sense. No, no, no. no. Completely get it. Wow. If you 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 have some knowledge of how the R. Kelly situation went. Yeah. Is it <clears throat> in your opinion that this is anything re close? Like, I mean, obviously the media, the media hoopla is going to be what it is. But do you feel like this might be something that the, because with, with, with the R. Kelly thing for me, they sunk their teeth in it, no diddy. And then they literally kept bringing up more shit. They were like, oh, well, there's some shit in Chicago, and what about the shit over here? It, it, it was clear that they weren't going to let him go. What do you, like, yeah. Yeah. what's your inclination towards this? Like, you don't think they're looking at it like that at all, right? Um, no, I would say they're going to look at it very similarly. Um, really? You know. Yeah. So, so, um, right. I, I would, I would argue that the R Kelly case was a, uh, almost like damn near like a test dummy on how to do federal sex slash human trafficking cases on celebrities, right? Get a bunch of witnesses. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a, a number of witnesses just like R Kelly did in, in their, in this situation. Right. So, um, I would say it's going to be very similar to what to what uh, R. Kelly had going on, because it's, wow. it's similar charges. So that means that they are doing the investigation probably very similarly, right? Feds don't like to rewrite the wheel, man. You know, you you always get like a go by re report from a from a colleague. Like, you know, you don't rewrite the wheel. You kind of just do. If it's worked before, I guarantee the agent that did the R. Kelly case is probably in communication with the agent doing this case. I guarantee fucking tee it, guarantee it. Yo. It's, it's gonna be a crazy like uh, type of question, but um, sure. W w what do you believe? Um, I was gonna ask. W what do you believe? Wait, did I forget my question? Maybe I did. Um, I think I forgot the question. But I, but I knew, I knew it had to do with something with watching how this is going on. And no, nah, I forgot the question. I forgot the question. I don't know. I, I'm in disbelief, bro. Nah, it's crazy, bro. I mean, I, I project 
that we will see charges probably by the end of this year. Oh, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the question just popped back in my mind. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So this is just the thought of me, maybe some people, like especially in the hip-hop community. I would think that Diddy is of the realm and echelon that especially, you know, he could have done things to avoid this from happening. Like, like I remember even Trump saying that, you know, um, being cool with, I forgot who the FBI director was. I was like, he was like, oh, well, Hillary is cool with this person. This is why she never got blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I got to imagine at a certain level, you are cool with, or, or you could get cool with certain people to um, have the influence that you would not get these charges. Do you think that Diddy w w would, or, or have you ever seen cases or situations where people have these influences with these people who are in the in crowd that these charges or these indictments or raids never happen? Um. So when it comes to the feds, bro, um, anytime they have a high profile target like a Diddy, an R. Kelly, et cetera, and this is kind of, you know, with all federal law enforcement agencies, they're going to go even harder, bro, because they look at it like it's a big press release. They're going to go harder? It's a harder? case. Like, they're, they're going to go at that person, right? Uh, if it's a dirty cop or anything like that, they go even harder because they know that they have to make sure that they have their T's crossed and their I's dotted. So um, as soon as they got information on this and it seemed, ver you know, verified, they're going to go hard in the paint. Jeez. I mean, I'm looking right now. Like, right, um, I'm looking at the Fox News thing. The fact that they brought out the fucking truck, bro. Um, like, they brought out the fucking evidence truck. <laughs> like, bro, that's overkill, nigga. Like, yo, we, we like, you, you don't do that shit uh, for everybody. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they brought the evidence truck. I see ASEX out there. Um, you know, I see literally, like, a bunch of agents, like, yeah, th th this is this is a big deal. They're going hard. All three of these offices are are locked in. Like they're, they're, this isn't a normal search warrant. God damn, man. Um, okay, this is probably a, a a part of usually these things that you're not experienced on, which is probably rare. But still, if you're Diddy, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? If you're Diddy, uh, what do you do? Yeah, again, you're used to being on the opposite side where you're yeah, going for the guys. Yeah, no but, question. like, if, if if let's just put you in Diddy's shoes today. You get on a flight. You're going to, I don't know, you're probably going to go to a meeting or whatever. You yeah. see all this happening. You have 10 million lawyers blowing you up, but they're still asking you, what do you want to do? They're probably giving you your, your, their opinion. But what do you do? Um. <clears throat> That's a good ass question, bro. Obviously, right? You're you're gonna secure the best legal counsel that you can, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna say shit to the police, right? You're gonna try to um, see if you can get any of these documents, right? I mean, it'll be tough for you to get the search warrant. What about if they uh, ask you to come in to talk to them? Uh, I would go with my lawyer, but I will go just to see what they're gonna ask me and what they know. But I wouldn't say shit. Really. Yeah, I I would go just to see what they're gonna ask me, and and not answer questions, and and that's kind of where like you go in with your lawyer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now kind of just try to figure out what's going on, um, or you don't show up at all. But I would show up with my lawyer if 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 they if they ask me to come in just to hear just to hear what 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 they're gonna ask me. Fuck. Yo, that's so interesting because I think that's what everybody always wants to like. You know, when when they're thinking that, okay, how do you kind of, how do you, like, plan against what the police already have for you? Yeah, no, it, it's tough, bro. I mean, um, you know, obviously I'd like to get my hand on that search warrant, the affidavit, because that's going to have a fuck ton of information. Those, aff those three affidavits that were filed, because remember, one was filed in Miami, one was filed in L.A., and one was filed in New York. That's three different affidavits, probably three three different affidavits as well right i'm sure they all have similar information in them could you use maybe the same call. incidents or dates like like could they be like hey listen um on i don't know on on january 15th we uh he was either in miami new york or or or, or florida 
no, or Miami, New York, or uh, L.A., and we think this happened, we have probable cause to think this happened, or they have to list specific incidents relating to each places, basically claim that things are where they are at different times because that's a lot more work, right? And that's, and that's what has me worried. They had to list specific times for each property. That's why I'm confident that this is this is a uh, 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 he's probably going to get arrested at some point. They had they had to list specific incidents at specific times per property. Not only that, they have to say what evidence they think is in that property and what they intend to seize at that property. Okay, I'm gonna. This is a dumb question, and when I mean a dumb question, it's a question. Nah, there's no dumb question, bro. So so um, you know I spoke about it before. So Russell Simmons, who was you know. Shit, he was getting accused of a lot of things before even Diddy. He he moved to Bali, so he's in Bali. He's yeah. He's there doing yoga, and who knows if there's an investigation? But because he's always out of reach of the U.S. government, and I'm not too sure what the uh, extradition statutes are there. He's primarily stayed there, and probably also made probably made the U.S. government or maybe U.S. Whatever U.S. body that would be investigating him be like, you know what? This guy's not even coming back here. Why waste our resources? While Diddy's here, like, fucking popping bottles in every club. I mean, fucking Harlem shaking, take that, take that. Which I, I think is almost thumbing the nose, like thumbing your nose in, in, in the face of people who are actively looking to see if you did something wrong. Do, do you think leaving the country, not now for Diddy, but like, Say for like other people who have may have done things, and from your experience, if your perpetrator was out of country, do you still do the full investigation? You're like, I'll wait till he gets stateside. So good question. So we actually don't have an extradition treaty with Indonesia, it's, it's a Bali. So that would really? make sense why uh, you know Russell Brand is. You said it was not Ru no, excuse me, uh, Russell, Russell Simmons. Um, wait, we don't uh, have Russell a we don't Simmons, have a, yeah. a, we don't have a, 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 a treaty with them for like extradition. No, nah, we don't. Oh, we don't have a, right it, with them, China, Indonesia, Iran, Mongolia, Russia, a couple other countries. Typically countries that we're not that friendly with, we don't have extradition treaties with them. However, what I will say is you could still get somebody out of these countries. You you got to you got to um you know, it, it's a, and then it becomes a case by case person uh, uh a case by case basis. Um but you would file something called an MLAT is how you would get someone extradited. Well, uh explain explain explain. So, an MLAT is basically I think it stands for like a mutual lateral agreement. Um, but the United States Attorney's Office, what they do is they file the MLAT with the country, right? And then that country decides if they're going to honor that MLAT or not. And then that will go ahead and begin the formal extradition process. Now, MLATs are a pain in the ass, bro. I've dealt with a few of them. Uh, they could take up to years to get someone over. Because now you start to get into political realms where, oh, are we going to extradite this guy? You know, the governments are starting to make deals at the top level, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um, but it can be done. You just got to file an MLAT with the United States Attorney's Office. That's how you get someone that's foreign. Oh, my God. Yo, I'm looking at this video, and it says Homeland Security Investigation with the big-ass truck, and you can tell they put the extended shit out. Look Bro, like that's what I'm telling you. They don't bring that truck out for nothing, man. When I saw that, I was like, what the fuck, man? Only certain, only big field officers have that. So, Yo, they're um, setting up shop. Yo, like, hold on. Like, so, so just off of the scale of this, do you think that, you know, they've probably been there, uh, let's say they've been there like four hours or so. Do, do you think they'll be wrapping it up in the next two or three? Or do you think that they're like, yo, listen, we're here all night? Yeah, they're going to be there all day, bro. Really? Yeah, they're going to be there all day, 100%. The fact that they brought the truck out, they have this many agents uh, at each property. Um, they're going to be all there all day because what they're going to probably do is they're looking for documents. They're definitely looking for digital stuff, Right. Um, they're going to take every laptop, every computer, every phone, um, every tablet. They're going to take all that shit, put them in fair day bags. They're going to take all financial documents that they see. They're going to take all that shit, man. So it's going to take them a while to go through it. So they're going to they're going to be there probably into the evening, maybe even into tomorrow morning. Because because the thing is that once you leave the property, it's done. You can't go back in. So they're going to make sure they take their time and get everything that they need. Okay. Um, I, I've only seen this in the movies, so I'm asking you this on a hypothetical. Is yeah. there any way we're assuming Diddy, a billionaire, best lawyers ever in the world, is it a way he could challenge this search warrant while the search is happening, or does he have to wait till it, it has um, basically ended? 
Yeah, he's going to have to wait because what he's going to have to do is he won't be able to challenge it until he gets discovery, right? So, and, and what that is, is for the audience, is once charges are brought against him, he's going to get something called discovery, which is all the information that the government has on him, right? And then in that discovery, he'll be able to see precisely what led to the search warrant. Then his lawyers can look and be like, oh, wait, hold on. This, they broke the law here. Oh, they did the, this is a violation here, blah, blah, blah. Then they could challenge the search warrant. And then all fruits of that search warrant will be suppressed um, if they successfully win a suppression hearing. But they're going to need to have the, um, they're going to need to have the affidavit in play, aff excuse me, the affidavit in play for them to be able to, uh, to suppress it. So they'll have to wait until discovery to be able to challenge it. And then, uh, you know, everything that came from it. And then the motion for a suppression hearing, which I've done a hundred of those. Um, I could talk about how suppression hearings go, et cetera. But, yeah. Any chance that Diddy knew this was happening beforehand? Um, if the feds did it right, probably not. Because you're, you're, like, you're not even going to – if you're going to do a search warrant, you're not going to notify them until the day of and your agents are already in the property. Then you'll reach out to them or whatever. And, and obviously when you're someone like Diddy, right – you're doing everything where HSI is probably dealing directly with a law firm. So they'll just go ahead and give that law firm the return with all the stuff that they took. You know, they're going to make sure they have their T's crossed, I's dotted. Because anytime you go after powerful people like this that have a lot of money, you got to make sure that you're on point and everything is extremely tight. Mm. Wow. That's hey. why they brought the evidence truck out. That's why they got all these people. They're doing this. They're going to do this shit by the book on this one. Hey, so, so, and, and, and I was thinking, you know, Again, you know, I'm like the ghetto lawyer when I'm like doing some of these things. But here's the thing. So when I heard the report at first, they they approached or they um they said they gained access to the property, not through the front door, but through a side door um, mm -hmm. that was easy to do. And I said to myself, I said, sounds like they probably had a blueprint of the property or maybe they knew a little bit about it. They didn't just pick a random door. They probably knew the point of least resistance, and they probably did that. If if you're thinking about this scale operation, do you think that they're um, planning even the entry points and maybe what would be the quickest and easiest, or they're just showing up there and they're like, okay, what do we do? Yeah, no, they they definitely. I see that they have SWAT out there. Yeah, right. So that they definitely had. Um, a strategy with how they were going to enter the house in the safest way. Obviously someone like Diddy's probably going to have armed security, right? So they're going to make sure that they try to, you know, handle it at the lowest level and, and make entry safely. But I saw that they probably, they had a SWAT team out there. So the SWAT team probably did the, the initial um, <coughs> breach. And then once it was safe, then you bring in the, the agents in to start collecting evidence. So um, they definitely did their homework with each property, probably got, um, you know, floor plans of each house, where the best entrance is, et cetera. Um, so again, something big like this, bro, uh, it's it's uh, hundreds of agents are involved working it. They're going to make sure they do it correct, especially when it, they know that it's going to be media coverage. I, you best believe they probably knew that the helicopters were going to be out, you know, taking video of them doing this. Um, and, and I know you're a busy man. I don't, I don't know what your schedule is, but... but yeah, I'm going to dip out in a little bit because we got a show going, coming up, but, uh, you know, I can answer one or two more. No problem. Yeah, no, this is my last question. Sure. So... We all know that the popular thought is, oh, okay, they're investigating what Cassie said in the center. Remember, Diddy's name has been tied to many different things, including yeah. the whole thing with Tupac, right? Some yes. people believe that he was behind or maybe even paid the Southside Crips to maybe do this thing. They did charge Keefe D with that particular murder, but people also thought, hey, well, Keefe D, if he's going to try to slither out of this, maybe he will try to give up some information on Diddy. We have no idea if that's if that's the case, but I'm asking you as a general practice, let's say for example, one of the main reasons, right, or the the initial investigation is into sex trafficking and they're running up into this crib. They've gotten a search warrant for sex trafficking. What's the likelihood that they might be also keeping an eye open for anything that could tie to another crime that they have just known that this particular person is linked to or with? Yeah, no, uh, fantastic question. So what ends up happening, right, is when the feds get a search warrant, let's say they got this search warrant for guns, illegal guns, mm -hmm. right? They go in the house and they find evidence of another crime. It's all it's 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 all going to come in because they were, you know, there's a, there's a phrase that we used to use, you know, right to be, right to see, 
right? Which means you can use it. So if you have a right to be in the house because you got a search warrant, you know, to get in there and then you find evidence of another crime, you could definitely charge that person with those other crimes. Um, you know, and that's why like on drug warrants, a lot of times people get charged with other crimes. And the reason why is because when you got to get a drug warrant, well, if you're looking for drugs, you can hide them in the smallest nooks and crannies of the home. When you're in there looking in these small nooks and crannies of the home and you find something else, let's say you find some child porn or whatever it may be. Now you could tack on another charge because drug search warrants allow you to really like get into the house because of the way that drugs are typically concealed in, uh, in homes. Mm. So, um, they could definitely find other crimes. Maybe they might find a gun with the, ser uh, with the serial blade scratched off or something else like that. That's all going to come in if they, if they, uh, if they find it. Wow. 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 Uh, Myron, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, by the way, uh, people, I want you guys to go, um, Go make sure you go fuck with our um, Fed reacts. You know I watch the channel digital, uh, uh, digitally, uh, digital. Can I not speak today? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I yeah, watch yo, yo, is my yo. other YouTube channel, and then obviously Fresh and Fit is our main one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys can check me out over there. I do uh, breakdowns on criminal cases just like this. So if you guys like getting a perspective from a former agent, uh, I don't think there's anyone on YouTube that used to do investigations like this. You can check me out over there at Fed reacts. And then also fresh and fit. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you with the with the Tupac thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guarantee you, they already questioned Diddy a million times about this Tupac situation. Um, I, wait, I wait, 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 they like put him in a room and question him. They probably did because of all the allegations that he paid somebody off to to do it or whatever. Um, if you have a lawyer to intercept that, could you be like, hey, listen, we're not listen. Either charge me, or, like basically avoid question and say, hey, either charge yeah. me or, or we're not answering shit. Yeah, no, of course, of course. I mean, I'm sure he went in there with his lawyers and everything else like that, and they asked him some questions, and he's like, no, I'm not involved, et cetera. And the fact that he hasn't been charged for it yet tells you that he's not, he's more than likely not involved. So I, I looked at the Tupac case pretty extensively, man. Um, Tupac died because he got in a fight with some Crips in Las Vegas. You know, I know that's, like, not as sexy as everybody wants yeah, to yeah, know, yeah. but the reality is Tupac beat up on the wrong guys. They went looking for him. And they killed him. Uh, you know, we know who the four individuals were in that vehicle that day. Mm -hmm. um, only one of them is alive. Actually, the other three died uh, from, like, gang violence and stuff like that. Um, and the guy that got, he, the, the guy that actually was, um, that's still alive, recently got charged and arrested by Las Vegas for that. Um, and he was the one that procured the weapon that was used to kill Tupac, and he was in the vehicle, I think, in the front passenger seat. Mm -hmm. His nephew and another dude were the actual shooters. But, yeah, man, people say, oh, did he kill Tupac, blah, blah, blah. Nah, man. Pac just got in a fight with the wrong people in Vegas and got, they found him going to a club with Shug. They shot him up. That's what happened, man. Yeah. Not very sad in that situation. I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. It, it, it's going to be so interesting to watch this unfold because I'm going to be honest. I, I covered a lot of the Diddy lawsuits thinking, hey, at most, you guys might try to, you know, uh, like, uh, shit. I feel like I'm using yeah, the, the new word for like no homo or pause is no Diddy. But I gotta yeah, use I heard, it. Yeah. I gotta use it for Diddy. Like no Diddy. Like they might milk him dry. No Diddy. Like on on a um, you know, monetary level. Like hey, we're suing him. We're gonna get him to settle. We're gonna get him to pay yeah. this. But you're yeah. never gonna get this guy. Like, not like Suge Knight. Not like uh, um, uh, R. Kelly. This is Diddy. Like at the end of the day, we look at this guy as royalty. One of the greatest and the best at doing what he's done in the music industry, but also concealing anything that he may have done that people think that has been not on the up and up. So, like, me watching this is like, you tell me that the federal government is actually really going through and running through trying to, like, get this guy in jail? It, it's surreal to me, I'm going to be honest with you. No, it, it is crazy, bro. And the fact that they got three simultaneous search warrants at the same time in three different districts tells me that they have an enormous amount of probable cause. And, bro, they might have enough to arrest them right now. They're just waiting to get more information and, you know, do it all in one nice uh, indictment package. So, um, you know, like I said before, getting a search warrant for a home isn't easy. You need an enormous amount of probable cause because at the, it's at the top of the echelon as far as, like, um, you know, the Fourth Amendment, right? The wiretaps and search warrants for homes are by far the hardest searches to get. So. Um, and the fact they got it for three different jurisdictions through three different United States attorney's offices tells me that they have a very strong case. And I wouldn't be surprised if criminal cases, uh, uh, criminal, a uh, criminal case is not filed, um, by the end of this year. 
hey, from my you know professional experience. So man. they they handcuffed both of his boys and probably other people at the property security and other people. Um, let's say you're in the belief. Say you're say you're a security, right? Or say yeah. you're just a staffer, right? Let's like, say you're just a staffer. Um, yeah. But you're in the belief that this the subject of the investigation is Diddy. Are you getting a lawyer as well, given the fact that this has happened? Now, you've been in the crib many times. Who knows what maybe you were even caught doing on, on surveillance footage. Do you get a... Um, do you get a a, uh, a lawyer as well, or do you say, "Hey, listen, you know what? This ain't got nothing to do with me. I know they're gonna just leave me alone, and I'm just gonna kind of back up while they go get Diddy." Anybody that's associated with Diddy or was at these parties and witnessed any type of criminal activity needs to secure a lawyer right now. Really? Yeah. Anybody that was at these parties that saw any of this bullshit going on that was alleged, I, I would hire a lawyer right now and 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 at least do a consult and and because because it's going to come out because once they start interviewing people and they get this because this search warrant is going to lead them to other identifying other people other people are going to get talked to people are going to flip they're going to put pressure on other individuals like yeah anyone that was involved in this stuff needs to secure a lawyer right now do you think meek mill does, should get a lawyer i don't know what meek is privy to uh but i mean he got the money i would definitely you know, obviously only Meek and uh, allegedly you know, they went on a few shopping trips. They have matching outfits. You know, uh, <laughs> Diddy calls him dad. I'm being honest. Diddy calls him daddy. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I mean, like, if he was at these parties, yeah, he, he, I, I would, I would secure a lawyer. Mm. He got the money to do it too, so I would, I would, I would secure a lawyer, just, just so that you know how to move if if they do come and ask you questions. Because I guarantee you, they're gonna come and talk to Meek too. They're 100 percent gonna go talk to him. So they're going to talk to all Diddy's close associates, especially people that were at the at these parties. So fuck. But nah, bro. I, I'm a I'm a take off man. But yo, thanks for having me on, man. Percent, uh, bro. Yeah, I, I hope I was able to give the audience a little bit of value, give them insight you as to how do. like federal investigations really work, man. I really used to do this shit, so you know it's always fun talking about this stuff. No, you always do. Uh, please, everybody, go check out my man, um, Myron Gaines, uh, over at Fresh and Fit. You know, uh pretty much the best uh, self-improvement men's podcast in the game. Of course, he does his thing as well on um, Fed Reacts. Um, some of the most insightful, in detail, full-on breakdowns of, you know, very popular cases that, you know, they don't have to be necessarily trendy or newsworthy, but he does a really good job um, doing that. So, you know, please go check him out. I appreciate that, bro. And, you know, anytime you need me, act just, you know, as usual, he, he you know, he gave me a, a quick text that, hey, can you jump on real quick? I'll, uh, you know, I'm always happy to, you know, give uh, professional insight on this stuff and give the audience a little bit more info. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, um. Oh, hopefully, the next time they hear us together, I'm hopefully I'm on Fresh and Fit. All right, I'm I'm, I'm coming. Right, I'm, I'm coming here soon. <laughs> all right, man. We need you in Miami. I Be know. safe, bro. I know. All right. Appreciate you, bro. Peace, guys. Oh wow, people! Damn, 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 man.